<clears throat> thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father, worship your name, O Lord. We thank you for your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit, the way you have been moving in this place right now. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Worship you, worship you, worship you, Father. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence here right now. Oh, glory to Jesus. All the Facebook friends, the family of God, I invite you for the page of Inti Life. I'm very sorry because of the sound pro some sound audio problem was there. Bef That's why we set up everything. And right now we are starting the message. Glory to God. So we've been meditating about the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah had a, so much of a responsibility towards God's people. So when he heard the sad condition of the God's people, he began to intercede in the presence of God. He himself went into the presence of God. He himself went to the fasting and praying. He did not announce anyone. It was secret prayer, completely secret. Intercessory prayer. He started to stand between God and the God's people. This is the second commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Without love, you cannot do the intercessory prayer. When you see before eyes, people of God perishing, people of God have been in the bondage, the troubles, the sickness, unable to enjoy the presence of God, they're disconnected completely from the presence of God. When you look at those people, you have to stand between God and the man. Don't think it is a gift. Intercessory prayer is not at all gift of God. It is everyone's responsibility. Every believer, every pastor, every preacher, every family of God has a responsibility upon their shoulders to stand between God and man. For this, we need God's love inside of the heart. We have to look the people through the eyes of God. This is very, very important. So that's why Nehemiah, he was so disgraced, depressed, he went into the fasting prayer. We know. So how many days he went, we don't know. But one thing we know, maybe more than one month, maybe two months or three months. Maximum he went four months. He was in prayer. No one knew that Nehemiah was praying. He did not announce. He did not publish. This is what God has been expecting from every believer. So last time we came to know, he started to pray. When he started to pray, he did not pour out all his heart the problem. He did not pour out the problems. He did not went to the big agenda. No. He went into the presence of God with only one thought that people of God should be delivered from their bondages. People of God should not be in bondage. He was praying in his own house. He's praying in the house. Did not go to the duty. He was a cup barrier. He did not go to, could not go to the duties. He could not eat the food. He could not do anything. He could not sleep for more than one month, more than, I think in more than three months, he keep on praying and praying and praying in the presence of God. Glory to God. I want to tell you, dear brother and sister, the love is involved in intercessory prayer. Plus faith. Faith and love. And to see the desire, a desire to see the welfare of God's people. This is very, very important. So that's why he started to pray. How he started, he began to worship the Lord. When you read, when you read fifth verse and verse, he began to describe what is God. Lord, you are awesome God. 
So the moment you want to go for prayer, number one, the first thing, go and worship. Personal worship. There are no musical instruments. Personal worship. He was connected to the heart of God. When you connect to the heart of God, that real prayer will come. Real intercessory prayer will come. She keep on worshipping, worshipping, worshipping God. This is very, very important. So, if you read Nehemiah, first chapter, fifth verse, he keep on worshipping God. Next, what he did? Let us see, first chapter, sixth verse. Sixth, let us see sixth verse. Please let your ear be attentive to you and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant which I pray before you now day and night day and night for the children of Israel your servants and confess the sins of the children of Israel which we have sinned against you then he began to confess his sins he began to confess the sins of God's people deliberately doing the sin deliberate sin this is they knew God is the holy God they knew very well they have to live a holy life they knew very well how to take the help of God to live a holy life but they could not deliberate sinning deliberately sinning and hurting the heart of God that's why they went into the bondage that's why devil attacked their lives but I want to tell you, many times when you go for, keep on focus upon the sin, you will miss the righteousness of God. But confess your sins. You know where you did the mistake. You know where you did the sin. You know very well. Don't say, I don't know that. Before you could believe Jesus, unknowingly you might have done I might have done the sin but after knowing God after knowing God and known by God knowing the word of God when you do the sin you are doing the sin knowingly unknowingly no one will do it when many people pray like this Lord if I do the sin unknowingly what is this unknowingly no one will do unknowingly after believing Jesus. After believing Jesus, you'll come to know the knowledge of the sin. When you get the knowledge of the sin, you begin to open your mouth and confess the Lord before the Lord. And you look unto the righteousness of God. You look at the holiness of God. You begin to confess. This is very, very important. This is very, very important part in our lives. Many times we say, once we are saved, we are saved for life. That is not, that is not in the Bible. Once you repent, that's for lifelong, till your death. There is no need to repent. No, the Bible never say that. When you go the book of Revelation, we can see seven churches. Out of seven churches, God did not find the false in two churches. But rest of five churches, it means almost 80%, 80% churches, they are sin. And Jesus said, repent, repent. All the five churches, those are sinning against God. Jesus said, repent, repent, repent. For two churches only, he did not say, repent. So that's why repentance is not weeping. Not just because of the bondage, because of the problem, because of difficult. You may confess, Lord, I'm a sinner. That is not the way. Looking unto the righteousness of God. Repentance means look unto the righteousness of God. Look unto the holiness of God. Oh God, that is what I needed in my life. Your righteousness, oh God, not my righteousness. Your holiness, not my holiness, my good works, my good character. 
See here, every time God's people doing the sin, when they get that calamity, when they get the sickness, when they get the plague, they begin to confess, they begin to repent. But Nehemiah here, Nehemiah was repenting wholeheartedly. He was looking unto the righteousness of God because he worshipped God. When you look at fifth verse, he began to worship the Lord. It means his focus was upon the righteousness of God. He looked unto the righteousness of God. He looked unto the holiness of God. This is what the church of God needed nowadays. The holiness of God means looking unto God, having fellowship with the Holy Spirit, having deep worship out of the heart. Your heart and his heart should become one. And your men, mind should be disconnected with the worldly affairs, civilian affairs. This is called mind displacement. Only spirit began to work. This is very, very important. When you worship the Lord, after that, he began to confess wholeheartedly. He was asking, Lord, forgive us, Lord. I want to tell you those days, there was no blood of Jesus. But now, we have the blood of Jesus. He did not do any sacrifice here. He was just asking Lord, forgive us. How you are praying? How you are confessing your sins? And many times your focus is upon your sinful life, not upon the righteousness of God. Confess by seeing the righteousness of God. And repent by looking unto the righteousness of God. Nehemiah did the same thing. Right? After that, what he was doing, if you read 8th uh, verse to 10th verse, he was remembering the covenant of God. See, three parts in his prayer. Number one, worship. Number two, repentance. Number three, remembering the covenant. He was saying, Lord, remember your covenant. I want to tell you, God will never forget his covenant once he made. Then why is saying remember? Many times when you look at the problems and troubles, you think God is forgotten us. Sometimes your, the focus was so deep about your problems, about your sickness. Sometimes you say, Lord, why are you making delay to answer me? God is not delayed and God is not forgotten. Let us see Exodus. If you see Exodus, Exodus. And let us see, the book of Exodus, here God was preparing heart of Moses to give the deliverance to God's people. But no one was praying. 400 years, they were in bondage. They, didn't, they did not have the thought of God in their lives. They did not pray. They did not worship. They forgotten completely God. They were enjoying in the bondage. Because our stomach is filling, we are getting the good clothes, no problem. But when their bondage was beyond their tolerance, their bondage was not able to tolerate, then they began to cry out to God. If you read second chapter, right? They began to cry out. They were first time after four, 400 years, they were praying to God. It means God expecting your prayer to work on this earth. God expecting your prayer, your permission. You have to allow the Holy Spirit to work in your life, in your family, in your country. Allow the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit. I will tell you one example. I'm living in a rental house. This is a rental house. And we are paying every month 12,000 for this house. One day owner came. He did not enter directly into the house, though he was a owner. He is a owner. He took the permission 
and came and sat in one place. He did not enter into the bedroom. He did not enter into the washroom. He is the own house. His own house, he did not have a right to enter. Why? He has given the house to me for rent. If at all he wants to go to the bedroom or washroom, he has to take my permission. Though he is a owner, in the same way, God is the owner of this universe. Jesus is the owner of this universe. God is the owner. Holy Spirit is the owner of this universe, owner of this earth. But this earth, the Bible says, the earth belongs to God, but he has given to his people. God has given this earth as a rent for human beings. If at all God wants to work, he needs your permission. The permission means that is your prayer. Your interest that God should work on this earth to do his work. That's why 400 years they did not pray. After 400 years they began to pray. They are praying what the Bible says here. Let us see. Uh, Exodus 2nd chapter 23rd verse. 23rd. Now it happened in the process of time that the king of Egypt died. Then the children of Israel groaned because of the bondage. Till then they did not groan, they did not pray. It means in the bondage they were enjoying. They are delighting in the bondages. How many times in the heart you are enjoying the bondage? Enjoying the sin? Outside you are hating. Outside you stopped. Outside you stopped. Nothing. You are doing anything. But inside when you delight you are in bondage. Don't delight in the sin in the heart. Hate the sin in the heart. Then the Holy Spirit will work. See these people for 400 years 400 years, they delighted in the bondage. When they fed up, they began to cry out to God. They are groaning. They are because of the bondage and they cried out and they, their cry, the Bible here, listen carefully. Their cry came up to God because of the bondage. So God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant his covenant with Abraham with Isaac and with Jacob what God did the covenant he began to remember the Bible says remember who will remember those are forgotten and he, was God has was God forgotten the covenant regarding these people no people forgotten God's people forgot in the covenant. God did not hear. Translation must be like this. God confessed or announced or declared on them. That or declared should be like this. God declared his covenant. Or God announced his covenant. Or God confessed. The can not remember here. Someone should speak the covenant of God. But people of God forgotten everything. That's a God himself is announced, declared his covenant. That is the meaning. That's a God. Here, Nehemiah was praying, Lord, remember. It's not remembering. God will never forget you and forget me. He never forget his covenant. So that's why you must remember the covenant of God. What was the covenant? What is the covenant? Father did the covenant through the Son, through His blood. The Son shed, shed the blood on the cross. Through the blood, He made a covenant. It means the blood of covenant, covenant. the blood covenant cancelled the first covenant. First covenant has vanished, disappeared. That's a second co covenant came. This is forever and ever the, on this earth. 
So what, what is this covenant means? Father made a covenant through the blood of Jesus Christ to forgive the sins. Now you and I should pray like this. Father, we thank you. You made a covenant through the blood of Jesus. Finish. Intercessory prayer. First worship. Next repentance. Number three, remember the blood covenant. See, so intercessory prayer is so important in our lives. I want to tell you, when when uh, Nehemiah was started to intercede, what was his work? Let us see what was his work. First chapter, 11th verse, last part. For I was the king's cup barrier. As a cup barrier, he was interceding. But when you come to 5th chapter, Nehemiah 5th chapter, 14th verse. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah. This cup barrier became governor of Judah. Nehemiah was writing this. He became governor of Judah. How it is possible? Yes, everything is possible. Nehemiah, he did not pray for the promotion. He did not weep for his least position. Oh Lord, I'm a cup bearer. How long shall I work this work? I need a promotion. He did not say that. Glory to God. He was praying. He was, he was, he decided to pray for the welfare of God's people. God's people should come out of this bondage. Interest, he started intercession. It means intercessory prayer brings promotion. When you wholeheartedly do the intercession, from one position to another position, you will be promoted. From low stage to low estate to another high estate, God will take you. That is Holy Spirit work. Cup barrier became governor of Judah. Promotion. So when you keep on do the intercessory prayers, your family will be promoted. Your ministry will be promoted. Your church will be promoted. There will be a promotion, exaltation starts because you love the people. You love the people and begin to intercede and started to stand between the man and God. Glory to God. Glory to the name of Jesus. Is it not wonderful, dear brother? Is it not great? So that's why intercessory prayer gives you promotion. Right? Next, intercessory, when you do the intercessory prayer, it brings unity. Unity. The devil always want to divide the people. Division is from the devil. But I want to tell you, sometimes for good reason, we will be separated from the people, those who are not working for the kingdom. But you must go with the people, those who are for kingdom of God. Some people, they take the kingdom of God only outside. But inside, they have secret agenda. They will use you for their own benefits. You should separate from them. When the people uses you for their own benefits, neglecting the kingdom of God, but they will do everything in the name of Jesus, in the name of kingdom. But there is selfish motive. You must separate from them. There is no need to go and mingle with those people. Those are not for kingdom of God. Now here, when you intercede, the Bible says, if you read Nehemiah, second chapter, 13th verse, 13th verse to 18th verse. 18th verse. 
And 13th verse, I want to read 13th verse. Then I said to them, you see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come, let us build. He's calling for unity. Nehemiah was calling for the unity. Those are ready to build the wall, to rebuild the gates. This is important. So when you intercede, you were intercessory, though Nehemiah was praying alone, but his prayer brought so much changes in the nation. Not only personal life of Nehemiah, in the nation also, Jerusalem, he was calling for the unity. Then what the people said? People said, if you read 18th verse, so they said, let us raise up and build. Let us let us rise up and build. This is important. One mind people. Kingdom mind people. This is important. The builders. Building mind. Constructive thinking. Constructive plans. You can join with them. You can join your hands with those people. Those are have constructive thoughts and plans. Some pastors are there. When you go with them, in the beginning of their days, they will use you like anything for only their benefit. Their family benefits, their church benefits. They don't look anything. Only family himself. Even they don't look the church benefits. Why church people? Church people should work in their house. They have to clean the house, wash the clothes, cook the food. For this purpose, they will use church people. These people don't have the constructive plans, constructive thinking, constructive ways. Be separate from them. But work with the people, those who are ready to construct the kingdom of God. Construct, build the church. Church means not the building. I'm talking about the believers group. The edification of the body of Christ. Building the body of Christ. With them you can go without any secondary thought. Nehemiah did the same thing. So your intercessory prayer brings the like-minded people together in one platform. Then there will be no differences. So here the same thing happened. Nehemiah was prayed alone, but he could not do alone all the work. He need like-minded people, not the people. Not the Christians, not the pastors, like-minded people you need. And Nehemiah was calling those people. So, number two, your intercessory prayer brings the unity. And number three, see, when you do the intercessory prayers, these things will happen. When you start intercessory prayer, the devil's kingdom will be disturbed. Devil's kingdom will be disturbed. If you read 2nd chapter of Nehemiah 10th verse. 2nd chapter of Nehemiah 10th verse. The Bible says here. 10th verse. When San Balat, the Horanite, and Tobai, the Ammonite, official heard of it, they were deeply disturbed that a man had come to seek the well-being of the children of God, children of Israel. They were disturbed. Why? Because a man, only one person came to build, to construct the lives of the people, God's people. Only one person interceded. For days together, with, he could not eat. He did not declare the fasting, but he could not eat. He did not have mind to eat. 
He did not mind to sleep. He was all the night he was praying and interceding. I believe in my spirit. In the world, many people are like this. Many preachers, many pastors are like this. They are, they are not exposing. But all the night they were interceding. All the night. They are not coming up out and exposing themselves. I am doing prayer, I am doing prayer, I am doing prayer, 100 days prayer, 21 days prayer, 30 days prayer. That is not, nothing was there. I, can, I know very well. In the churches, they print the pamphlet, 100 days fasting prayer. What is that 100 days prayer, fasting prayer? I asked one pastor like this. Brother, what, can you explain me what is the 100 days fasting prayer? He said, brother, all the night people will come. Church people will come. We all together. For three hours without eating, we'll fast for 100 days. What is this? Will you call it 100 days fasting prayer? Just for three hours. From 9 to 12, night 9 to 12, pastor and all the church members together praying, they named it 100 days fasting prayer. This is a deception. This is a deception. So that's what, but I want to tell you wholeheartedly, many preachers all, all over the world, lakhs of people are there. They are praying all the night. Praise God for those people. I want to tell you, with those, the Spirit of God will work mighty works. Th through these people, the Holy Spirit starts to construct the body of Christ. Only one person praying day and night for days together. What happened? Enemies disturbed in the heart. Enemy of Sanalbat, Sanbalat, the Horonite, Tobia, who are they? They are enemies to Nehemiah, yeah. enemies to God's people. It means when you start to intercede, intercessory prayer brings fear in the heart of enemy. Enemy will disturb. The devil's kingdom will be disturbed. The devil's kingdom will be stirred up. They'll get fear. They'll be disturbed. Now what are you doing? What are you doing? You may be disturbed by saying all these things. But by the word of God says in the Bible, intercessory prayer means that is you and God. Number one. Number two, Nehemiah did not get even thought of eating, thought of sleeping. He was praying. It's not a curse. Without sleeping, without eating is not a curse. The responsibility, the love towards God's people made him not to eat anything, made him not to sleep. Day and night he was praying. What is the love you have towards God's people? God's people, believers, and what about the unbelievers? How to stand between God and man. That's why Jesus came and he said, we are priests. He made us priests. He came, he died on the cross, risen from the dead. He made us royal priesthood. Priest, you may be king. King, enjoy the life but priest stand between God and man responsibility responsibility let's decide then what happened when he did all these things how the spiritual warfare started next week we'll see how the enemy started to attack him and what he did what Nehemiah did. So when you compare these things to the spiritual warfare, oh, we get so much from the Holy Spirit. You will come to know how to do the warfare, spiritual warfare. See, next week we'll see, book of Nehemiah, you can see intercessory prayer. After that, you can see the warfare. For what? The people of God were in bondage. They were not enjoying the presence of God. They were not enjoying their lives. 
but intercessor can do anything intercessor can damage the kingdom of the devil now dear brother and sister decide in your heart please decide in your heart go for intercessory prayer be damager of the devil's kingdom let us become a damager don't manage the devil's kingdom let us damage be damager don't be manager a brother i'm good administrator brother i'm good manager brother i could manage i can administer anything and begin to mingle with the people and through which you want to get the money you want to develop your family yourself what about your church what about the god's people what about the people they were in bondage and sickness in troubles in tears name you could not sleep but you're sleeping well all the night only one hour towards you pray you will say hey i pray two hours i pray three hours i pray in five hours but name you here he didn't have the holy spirit anointing he did not speak in tongues but still he prayed and prayed and prayed gets together what about you and me the holy spirit is so powerfully working through me and through you what about your speaking in tongues why don't you pray all the night in speaking in tongues in the presence of god taking the help of the holy spirit and standing between god and man and interceding then you can see your self promotion and family promotion and god's people promotion everything will happen that is work of the holy spirit let us decide let us decide if you are doing in a wrong way please ask the lord to forgive you and stop the ways that you have been constructing your self and family forgetting god's people ask the lord forgive me lord yes lord whole heartedly and repenting my mistake my sin do not unworse i'll pray like nehemiah i will stand between you and god's people i will take the help of the holy spirit i keep on speaking in tongues intercede by speaking in tongues praise god let's pray father we thank you for your presence we love you lord for your presence we need your presence we need your help to stand between man and god Lord we saw many people in bondage in tears in confusion they don't know what to do Holy Spirit we are praying right now through us whatever you intended to do do it oh father god we are ready Holy Spirit we are totally committing our lives to you we worship you we praise you we give you glory we give you honor that you are building up you are constructing your body through us we worship you praise you we destroy all the works of the devil in jesus name we destroy all the self motives in jesus name we destroy the misleading misunderstanding misguidance in the name of lord jesus spirit of mammon we command you lose the minds of the people in jesus name we speak deliverance to god's people we speak deliverance to the people those are standing in the gap between god and man we thank you holy spirit we give you glory we give you honor power to your name we thank you holy spirit you heard our prayer we love you we praise you give you glory in jesus name we pray amen and amen amen praise god glory to jesus so i praise you jesus for your work here right now and i thank you those are watching and those are going to watch later god bless you let us stand between god and man and be promoted in all the areas of our lives and i thank you Bobby we call Anand Hemant Bobby 
Thank you, Bobby, that has given opportunity to preach in T Life page. And God bless you and use you mightily to spread the love of God all over the world. Amen.